So tonight we're going to be cooking uh, orzo risotto, not a classic risotto, uh, we're using orzo pasta, which is this. It's a type of pasta shaped like a rice, really delicious, cooked in about 8 to 10 minutes. So to start with we're going to get a warm pan with some cold pressed rapeseed oil, a really delicious version of uh, olive oil. I personally don't use much olive oil in cooking. I tend to use rapeseed oil because it's British. It's very tasty, very nutty. To start off with a warm pan, don't get it too hot. In the pan, we're gonna have some diced celery, some diced leek, and some diced onion with a garlic clove just cut in half. We're just gonna sweat this down very, very gently for about, I don't know, a minute, minute and a half, just till it starts to go soft. And then we're gonna add the orzo and then we're gonna braise this down for around 10 minutes in a, a tasty stock of your choice. Today I'm using uh, ham stock, which uh, I made with a, a poached ham hock in the week. But you can use vegetable stock, you can use water, you can use a stock cube. Don't feel too obliged to you know, go out and make a, a, a long process stock, just make what you, what you have at home or whatever you've got in the fridge. So the vegetables are literally just starting to soften. I don't want to break them because I want some texture. The orzo goes in. Give it a quick stir. So we're going to season it slightly now. If you season your food at the beginning of cooking, you have to season very much less at the end. Therefore, you use less salt and the salt flavour is actually cooked in, which means it's seasoned rather than salty. So into that, I'm gonna add just enough stock. About that much, just to cover it. Turn it back up onto a high heat to begin with. And you wanna bring it to a really hard, fast boil and then turn it right down and simmer it. Once it's simmering, it will take around eight minutes to cook, but taste it and use your preference. If you want it very, very soft, cook it maybe for 12 minutes. If you want it a bit firmer like I like it, probably cook it for seven to eight minutes. So as you can see, it's just starting to come up to the boil. Eventually. Once that comes to the boil, we're gonna turn it down. Um, so when I say a boil, we want it boiling all the way around, right into the middle. And that way you know you've actually started the cooking process nice and fast, so it won't take long. Also is great for a midweek or even a weekend supper. It cooks so, so quickly and you can use it literally with any flavors you want. It can be a vegan, vegetarian, you can put any kind of meat in, chorizo, pancetta. So we're up to a nice hard boil now. And then I'm just going to turn that down to a simmer. In true Blue Peter style, here's one I made earlier. So this is ready to actually finish. You can see all the stock's been soaked up. It's gone really, really nice, really shiny and glossy. I'm just gonna pick the garlic out. So I didn't want garlic, as in loads of flavor. I just wanted a hint, so I just cut a clove in half. So to finish the orzo, we've got a few bits and bobs that we're gonna put in. So this is literally what I've got in my fridge. I've got some courgette. All of this is gonna be sliced or cut very, very finely or grated, it's entirely up to you. But all I wanna do is cook this as quickly as possible. So you're basically retaining all the natural flavors and nutrients. You're not overcooking anything. It becomes really, really tasty and delicious. So we've got some courgette, we've got some whole spinach, which we're gonna just put the leaves in. I've got some frozen peas. I've got some new seasons asparagus, which I'm gonna roast very, very quickly. That's gonna go in right at the end. We're gonna roast it so it's got a nice nutty flavor. Um, I've got some gem lettuce, which again, delicious cooked. I'm just gonna cut into very thin, pieces so we, we won't cook this it will just literally warm through so it's still got a nice crunch same as the courgettes and i've got a small amount of mozzarella just to go in and give it that stringy sort of lusciousness and to finish the dish we've got some aged cornish gouda this is a three-year-old gouda from cornwall we're going to put a touch of lemon zest we've got some uh, homemade ducker which is hazelnuts and spices and seeds and then some roasted pumpkin and sunflower seeds for texture we're also then going to finish that with just a really, really nice finish of uh, cold pressed rapeseed oil. So back over to the stove and get the pan very hot. Just 
just a small amount of oil, we don't want loads. So into the warm orzo, the heat of the actual orzo cooking will finish everything. So we've got our frozen peas, our courgettes and our lettuce. And then just very, very gently stir those around. That can sit for probably a minute to two minutes just to let the residual heat in the pan do its work. We will of course taste this for seasoning before we serve it. We've seasoned the base, but obviously we've added lots more vegetables. Um, so it's gonna change the flavor profile. You can see now it's gone a little bit firmer. So when we finish this off, we're gonna add just a touch more stock, just to make it nice and soft. So the pan's nice and hot. Asparagus goes in. A little seasoning. When I say seasoning, I only use salt. I don't actually use pepper. Seasoning for me, salt enhances flavor. Pepper actually changes the flavor into a spice. There's nothing wrong with pepper. You can use pepper if you like it. My own personal preference is, is to not. But that's entirely up to you. The reason why we roast asparagus and not boil it, it's a very old fashioned way of cooking when you boil asparagus and I don't think it does it any favors. It tends to go quite soggy and limp. Doesn't taste nice, tastes very stewed. When we cook it like this, we're adding no liquid. All we're doing is concentrating its own juice, as it were. A little, a little touch of um, caramelization to give it a nice flavor, and that's it. It will taste so much better, and it'll have a great, great texture to it. So the asparagus now is halfway cooked. We turn the heat down. We're gonna add our orzo. We're just gonna finish it in this pan. We're gonna add a touch more stock. So there's just enough stock just to make it nice and liquid. We're just going to bring it up to a heat now just to make sure all the vegetables are cooked and soft. They're pretty much there. You can see the courgette has just started to go soft and limp, which is what you want. You don't want it to be soggy. This is not a, a, a soggy dish. This is all about using up those beautiful spring vegetables in your fridge, keeping them nice and crisp and light. So we're just going to pop into that some spinach leaves, which will wilt down. Not many. Baby spinach is great, it cooks very, very quickly, almost instantly. And into that, while that's nearly cooked, we're just gonna add a small amount of mozzarella. I had some mozzarella left over in the fridge. Uh, we're gonna add some gouda as well at the end, but you, could, you can use whatever you want. You could use cream cheese, creme fraiche, nothing. It's entirely up to you. I like mozzarella because I think it has that lovely stringiness, which I think with something like this, it gives it that nice sort of final end, end result. It's more, more luxurious than, than adding, say, butter or cream. So I'm just gonna chop the herbs to put that in now. So in here, I've got some parsley and mint. Um, you can use any herbs you want. Please, when you chop herbs, don't over chop them. You see chefs on TV doing this, this action everywhere. Uh, all you're gonna do is bruise them. Just chop them roughly. You don't want them fine, you want them quite big. So you're just using one single cut of your blade all the way through, and then you end up with roughly chopped herbs, but they're gonna, they're gonna retain their texture and their flavor so much better than bruised herbs. So you can see the mozzarella start to go nice and stringy now. Everything's cooked, but not overcooked, which is how we want it. Delicious. So we're going to have a quick taste, check the seasoning. A pinch more salt. And that is actually ready. So I'm just going to let the mozzarella actually melt a, a touch more off the heat. Everything's folded through, looks delicious. You see that it's lovely and gooey. You can at this stage add some butter if you want a richer finish. Um, I think this is nice, it's light, it's, it's very healthy. Other than the mozzarella, there's 
not much in it to, to complain about. So that's finished. So we go to our plates. And again, be as generous as you want. There's enough here for two people. That was uh, about 70 grams of orzo. And then, uh, as I said, whatever veggies I had in my fridge. Touch of rapeseed oil. Rapeseed oil is incredibly good for you. It is full of all the good oils that you want and it tastes delicious. We've got some seeds. This will give it a really, really nice crunch, really nice texture, and again, very, very good for you. A few uh, hazelnuts roasted with some spices. This is really delicious. Again, texture, crunch. Touch of lemon zest. This will keep everything very, very fresh. Now you can, uh, you can eat it like that and it's very, very delicious, but we're gonna finish it off with a three-year-old gouda made in Cornwall. Not too much, just enough just to give it that sort of nice umami saltiness from the cheese. And because this is aged, it's full of salt crystals, which are delicious. And that's it, Friday night supper. Orzo with new season's asparagus, hazelnuts, and the rest of the stuff that I had kicking around in my fridge. Enjoy.